Uh, Michael, it just seems like it's us. So um, I know you were in here for the last session for at least the help desk stuff. So uh, let's dive into it and then uh, I'll show you guys how to configure estimated wait time, positioning queue, and kind of how to test this stuff in you know a test environment, okay? Um, so yeah, that's gonna be largely what we're gonna focus on. I'll log into um, you know um, CCX editor. We'll configure the variables and uh, we'll talk about some of the things that's required when dealing with estimated wait time and position in queue. Okay? So, um, again, the script that we're going to use is the same help desk script that we kind of talked about um, earlier this morning. Um, the only difference here is that when we deal with estimated wait time and prior and position in queue, we're actually going to be looking at the queued section, right? So uh, largely everything's gonna stay the same besides looking into the queue, right? So there's a lot of different ways that we can implement estimated wait time or position in queue, um, but I'll show you how to do it directly on the script and uh, we'll go through here and we'll show you some of the steps here, okay? Uh, any questions before we move on here, Mike? Okay. Well, I do have to apologize. If you can hear that construction rumbling out there, that's, you know, we're just, we just have bad luck today uh, with that construction going on. Um, anyway, uh, let's talk about how we can implement this estimate, estimated wait time and position in queue. Um, again, you kind of attended my session this morning, so you kind of already know what this basic help desk script looks like. Um, so all we're going to do is we're really going to focus on this queue section to kind of um, support our uh, functions that we want to put in here, right? So um, again, when we're in the queue, we know that we're going to be playing a prompt that's essentially going to play, you know, agents are unavailable, um, please stay on the line and someone will be with you shortly, right? And then traditionally, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to play music on hold for five to 10 seconds, however long we get to configure this here. Now, um, we may want to drag certain items over to this queue branch in order for us to kind of get some statistics about our contact center, right? So where I want to really go is if you look at the slider on the very left hand side, I'm going to scroll down to my ACD component. Okay. And inside of my ACD component, I'm going to use a get reporting statistics step. And I really want to drag that after my initial play prompt to, you know, announce that agents aren't available. And, um, you know, with the get reporting statistics step, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to show you kind of the things that we need to configure to make this thing work. Um, the first thing is the reporting object, right? So depending on what we select here for the reporting object and fields, it will kind of give us some different kind of um, statistics that we want to kind of uh, run within a UCCX. So for instance, if we wanted to look for contact service queue information, we can select contact service queue and then notice some of the things that we can check for within UCCX. We can check for logged in resources, talking resources, um, who is ready, who's not ready. Um, let me scroll down a little bit more. You can see total amount of contacts, contacts waiting. Um, and then we scroll down a little bit longer. We got average wait duration, average talk duration. And then we also have something here known as expected wait time and position in queue. Since this lecture is going to be kind of focused on expected wait time and position in queue, we'll probably configure both of these reporting metrics, and then we'll make a decision and uh, be able to announce this to the, um, you know, to the user at some point, right? So anyway, let's go ahead and configure expected wait time first and foremost, okay? Now, here's the thing. In the row identifier, Okay, this is basically telling us, okay, well, you're going to be running the report on the CSQ, but this role identifier is really asking us, what CSQ are we really looking for here? 
right? So we know that there's only one CSQ that's set up for my test environment, so CSQ SG00. So what I want to do here is I want to set that CSQ ID, which in turn will make the CSQ SG00 in this case, right? Now, I haven't created any variables here yet for the resulting statistics. So before we actually save this configuration, I do want to create some of these variables so that I can output that data, right? Because as of right now, I don't have a variable that I can put that estimated wait time into. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a new variable and I'm gonna create two of them in this case. I'm gonna create an integer type variable because it's gonna be a number, right? For estimated wait time. And here I'm just gonna type EWT and I'm gonna do capital I for integer, okay? And um, here we can set it to zero if we want, that's, that's okay. Um, and realistically, what I wanna do now is in the get reporting statistics step, I'll repeat my process. I'll make this, you know, look for the reporting object of CSQ data. And I wanna look at the expected wait time, okay? And I wanna be able to track this using CSQ SG00. And depending on what my expected wait time is going to be, I want to input that value into this expected wait time integer. You see that? So that's why I created that variable in the very beginning. Okay. Now, um, because we saved this, that's okay. But let me just tell you a little bit about how this is going to work. Okay. Because this is in a test environment, um, this is largely based on historical data. Okay. So um, the system's going to measure how long people have been waiting in this queue. And then when, this get, when the system hits this get reporting statistics step, it's going to look at that historical data. It's going to generate some number in seconds, okay? Our problem is that this is a test environment. I really haven't queued very many calls inside of my environment so far. So what I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to want to at least put in some test variables just so that I can see that this stuff works out, right? So um, if I try to make a call right now, I'm not sure how much information, how much, how good of information this is going to be, but um, we're gonna have to create a test variable so that we can kind of massage these numbers to get different times, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do here as well. I'm gonna create another integer and I'm gonna call this the test expected wait time integer, okay? And I'm gonna set that also as gonna be zero, but I'm gonna make this a parameter. Remember why I'm making this a parameter. I wanna make this a parameter because at the end of the day, um, what's going to happen here is I wanna take this integer and um, I may want to put like 900 seconds so that I can test it to see that this is actually working the way that it's going to work, right? And because this is a test environment, again, I don't have any historical data to go off of. So I do wanna put some number here inside of my application page. So those are the things that I'm gonna create here, okay? Um, the other thing that I want to do is um, after this get reporting statistics step, what I wanna do is I wanna put an if statement in there. Um, and again, because this is a test environment, I want to be able to set some kind of a value um, so that I can test this stuff. So in my first if statement, what I want to do is I wanna say, well, if my test estimated wait time integer, okay, if that is going to be, uh, let's just say uh, greater than zero, Okay, can you kind of see what I'm doing there, right? If my test estimated wait time integer is greater than zero, it means that I've toggled this within my applications page. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set this for the true statement and I'm gonna say, if that is true, if that was user defined because I'm testing this step, what I wanna do is I wanna set the variable of my actual estimated wait time integer. And I want to make that to be equal to my test estimated wait time integer. 
okay? Now, what is this going to do? That essentially means that if this is user defined, like for instance, in my application page, let's say I wanna test this and I wanna get something to come back and say, you know what, the estimated wait time is gonna be in 900 seconds or whatever, how many minutes that's going to be, okay? I wanna be able to test that. So that's what's going to happen. If this is not equal to zero, right? And we look at this if statement, then it will set my actual estimated wait time variable to be equal to my test estimated wait time, okay? So I'm setting that up right off the bat. Now, in the false statement, the idea here is um, this is not a test. So in this particular case, notice if the test estimated wait time, you know, um, is not greater than zero, so it is zero, then this is not a test. I'm just going to run that test on the actual estimated wait time variable here, okay? So um, that's gonna be my testing, kind of like if statement here. If you weren't going to be testing this in the real world, I guess you don't need to put that if statement there. But since we are gonna make this test, that's kind of why I wanna put it in there for us, okay? Um, in addition to this, uh, what we need to know about this expected wait time when I look at this get reporting statistics step is that this is going to be inputted in seconds. And I don't know about you, but when you've called into contact center environments in the past, if you get an estimated wait time, I just want to know how many minutes I'm going to be waiting, right? Um, but this is in seconds. So at some point in time, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to convert this from seconds to minutes, right? So how do I do that conversion? Well, let's put another set statement after this if statement. And again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, well, let's make the estimated wait time integer, okay? Because the estimated wait time integer is going to be equal to something at some point. Let's make that equal to estimated wait time integer. And uh, let's go over here and use the divided function and let's divide that by 60. And the reason why I would be doing that is now I'd be converting whatever that get reporting statistics step is in seconds, I would be converting that into minutes here, okay? So that's kind of the point. Now, um, I'm gonna have to announce this to my end user. So um, I wanna take whatever that estimated wait time integer is, and I wanna be able to say that value, right? So what I can go ahead and do is I can go down here and I can go to prompt, and I can create a generated prompt to be able to generate a prompt based on a variable, okay? Now, we can't complete this just yet, but I just kind of want to see um, what kind of configurations are offered to us, right? So if I come over here and I look at my create generated prompt, notice the create generated prompt type. It tells me what I can create, right? So um, let's create a number create generated prompt. And um, the constructor type, I want to just say the number, okay? Um, and in this particular case, I want to use that estimated wait time integer. You see that? And again, this is already going to be converted in seconds based on my set here. So it's already converting seconds to minutes here. And here's the thing, this just, this is going to only tell me about the number, right? So if this is in one minute, it'll say one. If this is five minutes, it'll say five. Okay. If it's in 10 minutes, it'll say 10. Okay, so the reason why I can't finish this is because notice the output prompt, there is no output prompt. So like I haven't created that prompt yet. So in order to do that, I need to go down to my variables here. I want to create a prompt, okay? And uh, within my prompt here, I can essentially name it anything I want. Um, I'm just going to say estimated wait time prompt. Okay, oops, estimated wait time, EWT prompt. And notice what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to put anything within the value here because this is going to be creating a generated prompt for me, right? So I'm going to press okay. And um, I'm going to go back to create generated prompt. 
again, I'm creating a number. And this number here is going to be the estimated wait time integer. And I'm going to output that as my estimated wait time prompt. Okay. Now, here's what I want to do at this point in time. If I want to play this prompt, you'll notice that I'm going to have to put a play prompt underneath that estimated wait time. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to reference that prompt, right? And I want to test this because this is not perfect just yet. I want to be able to test this here in just a minute. But as you can see, whatever I generate from that estimated wait time integer, that's going to say the number of minutes inside of this play prompt, right? Now, let's see if this works. I'm going to validate this, make sure that everything's correct. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as estimated wait time, OK? And what I want to do is go into CCX administration, and I want to upload this script. Now, I'm going to go to my help desk application next. And what I need to do is I need to allocate this script um, that I just barely created. So here's my EWT script for estimated wait time. And you'll notice that there's a bunch of things here, right? So let's do a test estimated wait time here. Let's make that, let's make that 500. Uh, let's do test CSQ. I'm going to make this true so that I override some stuff. And for my welcome message, let's also change that to uh, some kind of welcome message here. Let me try to find one that will work for us. PL student zero. Okay, let's just do this one. Okay. Now, I'm going to update this. And I'm going to refresh this. Now, this is not going to be perfect, but I just want you to kind of hear what kind of options we get, right? So I'm going to call, make sure that's not ready. I'm going to call 1000 to call my application. English, welcome to ACCXL class. What type of problem are you experiencing? For hardware, press one. Software? I'm going to press one for hardware. Welcome, three. And notice we get an error, right? It doesn't actually do anything there. So what's going on here, right? Let's go ahead and go in here and let's take a look at where we have that problem. So I'm going to debug this. And on my script, let's debug the estimated wait time. We'll use this in seconds. And let's debug this through, OK? English, welcome to ACCXL class. All right. What type? I press one for CSQ hardware. So we can see that CSQ hardware is set right here. And then uh, you'll notice that the select resource, it goes straight to select resources step. Um, hold on. That's not right. Hold on. Let's fix that real quick. Test CSQ ID is equal to true. I'm going to set that up as SG00. All right, let's make that phone call one more time, shall we? English, welcome to it. Okay, so I press one for hardware. Crap, you know what? I think I saved this script wrong. Give me a minute to fix this real quick. So this 
if statement is supposed to go underneath my menu item. And that's not what I was doing before. So let me save this again. I'll upload it. And this time it should work. Okay, let's test that one more time. Sorry. So I'll read it. Hey, Welcome to AAC. Press one. All of our support agents are busy with other calls. Here we go. Your call will be handled in the order it was received, so please hold on. Did you hear that? There was eight in there, right? And um, what I wanted to show you before was if I debug this, it's kind of doing what we wanted it to do, but it's not really speaking everything that we want, right? Um, so again, if I debug this slower so that we can see what's going on. English, welcome to AACC. Let's press one for hardware. And uh, because my test CSQ ID is true, even though we set the hardware, what I want to do is I want to set the CSQ for all things to become CSQ SG00 at the end of the day because there is no CSQ hardware, right? So uh, as soon as I get to select resources step, remember there's no ready agents. So I'm going to go right down to the queue right here, right? And as soon as I hit the queue branch, notice I'm going to play agents aren't available. All of our support agents are busy with other callers. Your call will be handled in the order it was received, so please hold up. Now, let's take a look at this. Slowly, if I look at estimated wait time integer, notice the default value here is zero. You see that? Now, if I go ahead and step over, you notice how that's a negative one, okay? And I just wanna let you know, if you don't have sufficient historical data for, let's say, like a position in queue, or if you don't have historical data for things like estimated wait time, you don't want to see that negative one there because a lot of the times you may get errors based on that negative number, right? So that's why we're testing this step. So notice where I'm at. If the test estimated wait time is greater than zero, and if you take a look back at my application page here, and I take a look at my help desk application, you'll notice that I have set the test estimated wait time integer to become 500, right? So that definitely is larger than zero. So what I'm gonna be able to do here is I'm gonna be able to change that estimated wait time from a negative one to what was set on the application page for testing purposes, right? So as I step over, you'll notice that I hit that true statement because the test estimated wait time 500 is greater than zero. I'm gonna be able to set the estimated wait time, which is a negative one, which is not what we want, I'm gonna have that equal to my test value. So in this case, notice what changes. Ah, see how that estimated wait time now changes from negative one to 500, okay? And what I'm also doing here with the set step after this if statement is I'm saying, well, I know this is in seconds, but let's divide that by 60 so I can get minutes, right? And uh, because of that, I'm going to generate a prompt based on whatever 500 divided by 60 is. In this case, it's going to be eight minutes, right? So I'm going to take that estimated wait time prompt and I'm going to play it. So if this is where you're going to hear eight. Eight. Ah, but that's it, right? Now, how can I make this a little bit better? Because my estimated wait time, what I truly wanted to do was I truly wanted to play a, your estimated wait time is eight minutes, right? So I'm gonna have to concatenate a couple of different prompts here. And you know, I've had already some of these things pre-recorded within my system. So if I go to prompt management, I go to English US, and then I go to HD for help desk, you'll notice that there's a couple of things here for estimated wait time. Uh, actually, you know what, let me go back. And let me look at the estimated wait time. It's probably in here. So if you notice, there's a wave file here. Your estimated wait time is. And then if I create that generated prompt that says eight, notice what I have to concatenate last. Minutes. Ah, 
So I'm going to want to concatenate both of these kind of prompts together in addition to my minutes value so that I can announce this to the end user, right? So let's go ahead and add in some of those prompts. So I'm going to create another prompt type gener uh, variable. Um, and this is going to be prompt. And I'm going to say, uh, your estimated wait time is, and then this is going to be a prompt. And um, you know what, for this prompt here, I think if I go back here, this is going to be under the EWT branch. So I need to know that this is EWT backslash EW, oh, actually backslash, and then let's see if I can send that out. And let's do this one, estimated wait time dot wave. Okay, and I'm gonna paste that in here, EWT backslash insert. And now I know where I'm gonna be playing that estimated wait time is prompt, okay? In addition to that, I also need to add another prompt type variable um, because I need to be able to announce the minutes portion of that, right? So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna go back in here, I'm gonna create another prompt and I'm going to say um, estimated wait time minutes prompt. And again, one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to paste this in as EWT backslash and then estimated wait time in minutes. Okay. So now I know where to go for all of these things. Now I'm going to change my play prompt real quick. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to concatenate this. So I'm going to get rid of estimated wait time prompt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to concatenate. I'm going to say um, your estimated wait time prompt, and then I'm going to add, and then I want to concatenate this with my estimated wait time. And also I want to add this to my estimated wait time in minutes. Okay. So in this particular case, where's estimated wait time, uh, wait time minutes prompt? And you'll notice that what I'm doing here with this play prompt is I'm just basically playing a bunch of WAV files together. So let's go ahead and save this. And let me actually go ahead and upload this back into my repository here. And let's go ahead and see how that has changed what my application, how it behaves. English, welcome to ACCX. All of our support agents are busy with other callers. Your call will be handled in the order it was received, so please hold on. Your estimated wait time is eight minutes. Ah, you see how that changed a little bit, right? Um, so at first, when we didn't concatenate this, we were only playing, I guess, the estimated wait time prompt. But eight by itself doesn't do you any good, right? So what we did was we just concatenated a bunch of stuff that we recorded. Your estimated wait time is, and then we generated this prompt, and then after that we played the minutes portion of it. You see that? So that's one way that you can implement estimated wait time. Um, and if you like that, great, that's cool. Um, what I'm going to do in addition to that is maybe we want to also play a position in queue. So very much like estimated wait time, we're gonna do the same process, right? We're gonna add a reporting statistics step, but this time we're going to be able to use position in queue instead. So I wanna add this underneath my play prompt. So before I actually give you music on hold, I wanna announce all this stuff to the end user, right? So. For this get reporting statistics step, um, I'm going to select the same kind of objects. I'm going to look at CSQ data. Um, and in CSQ data, I want to look at your position in queue instead of estimated wait time. Now, the CSQ that I'm going to be looking for this data is in the CSQ ID, in this case, CSQ SG00. And you'll note that the resulting statistic we don't have just yet. So we created one for estimated wait time, but we never created one for position in queue. 
So before I actually go ahead and save that, I need to go ahead and create a integer type variable. And I need to create a position in queue integer. Okay. And very much like estimated wait time, I probably have to create another integer value for test um, position in queue integer, right? And that could be a parameter that I could define on my applications page, just like my estimated wait time, okay? So for this get reporting statistics step, again, we're gonna go back to it. We're gonna look at the CSQ data. We'll look at position in queue, and in my role identifier, I want to select my contact service queue ID. In this case, it would be SG00, okay? Then for my resulting statistic, I'm going to use this as position in queue integer, okay? Now, as soon as I step over this get reporting statistic step, it should report my position in queue right here, okay? Now, because this is a test environment, right? I probably want to massage these numbers and change these numbers um, from time to time. So to test these numbers, I'm going to put an if statement in there. And on my if statement, I'm going to say, well, if my test position in Q integer is greater than zero, okay? Um, it probably means that um, I'm testing this stuff. So what I can do with that particular um, statement is if my test position Q integer is greater than zero, then I want to set certain items here, right? And what I really want to do is maybe not track what's happening, you know, in my actual queue because there's nobody actually there. But um, let's go ahead and set my position in queue integer to be equal to my test position in queue integer. You see that? That way, if we're ever testing the step and I ever have to modify those numbers in an application just to see what kind of numbers show up, I will be able to be announced that, all right? Now, uh, I don't have to convert anything because this position in queue is just a number, right? It's not in seconds, it's just what position I am in queue. So I don't need to convert anything like I did have to convert here from seconds to minutes or anything like that, okay? My very next step is probably to create a generated prompt, okay? And I wanna put that underneath my if statement. So in this create generated prompt, again, I can't really create this yet because there's an output prompt that I haven't created. But um, at some point in time, I'm gonna have to create like a number or an ordinal just so you guys know, uh, the difference between number and ordinal is like, if you're like fifth in queue, the number five, it would just tell you number of five, right? If it's an ordinal, it would be, it would say fifth instead of five, right? So ordinal is a little bit better for this generator type. I'm gonna construct it as a number. Um, notice the arguments here is that I want to do this for my position in queue integer whatever value that's going to be. So if I'm 10th, it's going to say 10th. It's just not going to say 10. If I'm 20th in Q, it'll say 20th. It won't say 20 in Q. Okay. So that's what an ordinal does. It just says the number a little bit differently for the ordinal. Um, but anyway, and then there's an output prompt. Now I don't have an output prompt yet, so I can't really save this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. It will be a prompt type variable. And here, what I want to name this is, uh, let's call this PIQ prompt. And um, I'm not going to put a value in here because that's going to automatically generate that prompt for me. So in my create generated prompt, again, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to select ordinal. I'm going to make it a number. I'm going to generate this data from my position in Q integer. But my output prompt is going to be position in Q prompt. Okay. Now, again, here's the thing is if I put a play prompt in here. So if I put a play prompt and I just go in here and I go ahead and I select position in queue prompt, that may be okay. But let's check out what happens. Let's make sure that this validates correctly. If it does, I will save this as Let's just save this as PIQ for positioning queue. 
Okay. Um, and then let's upload this into our repository. And then let's go back to our application page and assign that script to our application. So instead of EWT, I want position in queue here. Okay, now again, a couple of things that I want to mess around with. I wanna make this true so that I'm changing my you know, CSQ ID to always be CSQ SG00. I wanna make my estimated wait time, let's put 1800. Let's put test position in queue. I wanna be the 15th in queue. Okay, and then let's change that welcome message because I know that's gonna be something that we won't want. So let's do this one. Okay, and um, let's see what happens when you make that call. English, welcome to A. All of our support agents are busy with other callers. Your call will be handled in the order it was received. So I'm in the queue. Please hold on. Your estimated wait time. Estimated is wait time. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Fifteen. You see how it just says fifteenth. Now the problem there is probably because we are only generating and playing fifteenth, but we're not really doing anything else. So to be able to concatenate this again, I'm going to want to go back to my prompt management. I want to go back to English US and under my position in Q folder, you'll notice that there's a bunch of different WAV files that will help speak my position in Q like you are currently and then 15th and then in line, right? In line. So I'm going to want to reference these wave files within my prompt within my script so that I can concatenate that play prompt together. So let's go ahead and do that, right? Let's go ahead and add a prompt. I'm going to concatenate this a little bit. So the name here is uh let's just call this you are currently you are currently prompt and I'm gonna put this in the PIQ backslash. And I believe this is in the you are currently wave file. So PIQ backslash insert. And so now I have that you are currently whatever in you know my position in Q. So this is my first one, right? Then I'm gonna add my last prompt that will tell me in line, right? So I get another prompt type variable, um, inline prompt. And let's go ahead and save that wave file. I'm gonna go back to UCCX and I'm gonna save this as PIQ backslash position in Q inline, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this play prompt a little bit. I don't want to just play that position in queue prompt, but now I want to concatenate those variables, right? So I'm going to be, you are currently prompt. I'm going to concatenate that by using that additional operator. I'm going to then play my position in queue prompt, which again, this is going to be that generated prompt based on that I guess, uh, create generator prompt right here, right? Positioning queue prompt. So um, actually that's wrong, sorry. Positioning queue prompt, there we go. And then I want to say the inline feature at the very end. So I can go over here and play that inline prompt. And now I've successfully concatenated that play prompt to play everything, just like I did here with the estimated wait time. Right. So if you're happy with this, I guess I can go and validate to see if I have any errors on the script. If this is okay, let's go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and upload this script. Oops.
and let's make sure that our variables are correct, okay? So everything here looks good. Let's change this to something like, I don't know, let's just put 250 seconds here and let's just put a seventh in queue, okay? So um, again, I'm gonna do this really slowly this time. Um, I'm gonna debug this and we're gonna go through and look step-by-step step exactly what's gonna be changing in my position in queue script, okay? So, I'm dialing. English, welcome to AC. Let's just press one to be able to go to hardware, okay? So again, I'm setting the CSQ as hardware here, so that's gonna change. But there is a if statement that says, hey, if the test CSQ ID is true, then I'm going to change everything to CSQ SG00. So at some point, this is going to go back to S CSQ SG00 here for testing purposes, right? Now, selecting resource step, there's no available resources. So I'm going to go to the queue section. Okay, again, it's going to play the agents unavailable. All of our support agents are busy with other callers. Your call will be handled in the order it was received, so please hold on. All right, now here's my first get reporting statistics step for estimated wait time. And so you'll notice that this is going to change. It's going to change from zero to probably that negative one since, you know, we're not really testing much within this test environment. So there's not a lot of historical data. But because we're testing this stuff, right? Um, if the test estimated wait time is greater than zero, which is what I have defined here, right? 250 is greater than zero. That's what I'm gonna calculate for. So you'll notice I'm going to set that negative one to be 250. Okay, see that? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that value, I'm gonna divide it by 60 so that I can get this value in minutes, right? So that's in four minutes. And essentially what's going to happen here is I'm going to generate a prompt based on that number. Okay. And then I'm going to concatenate this so that you can hear your estimated wait time is four minutes. Right. So when you hear that play prompt, that's what you're going to be able to hear. Your estimated wait time is four minutes. See that now position in queue. We hit our get reporting statistics step that will change my get uh, my position in queue integer here and notice i'm in i'm the only one in queue so the system tells me that i'm the only one in queue but my if statement here says if the test piq integer is greater than zero which if you take a look at it i have put a number there just so that i can test this so that you can hear different numbers notice this is seven so when I step over this, because seven is greater than zero, I'm gonna actually set the position in queue number from one to seven for that test value, right? So this will change from one to seven as soon as I step through the set statement. You see that? Now, I create a generated prompt based on that number. Again, this is an ordinal prompt, so it's not gonna say seven, but it's gonna say seventh, right? And um, what I'm going to do here with this play prompt is I'm going to concatenate this. I'm going to be able to hear you are currently seventh from my generated prompt. And then I'm going to say in line at the very end. So I'm going to play three total wave files here. Two from my repository, one that was generated from the script. Seventh. In line. Whoa, that didn't work out too well, huh? You are currently seventh in line. We didn't hear that, so... Let's see if I, oh, I did mess that up. So let me fix that really quick. So you'll notice there was a typo in here. I don't know if you've noticed, but that uh, you are currently, it didn't play that because I had a space in between here. But uh, let's now save this. I'll upload it and then we'll call it quickly so you guys can see that. Position in queue. Let's update this and then let's just go ahead and call this because you already saw the debug. But let's kind of see how that worked. English, welcome to ACCXL class. Okay. What type of problem are you? All of our support agents are busy with other callers. Your call will be handled in the order it was received. I should so expect that I'm going to get estimated wait time first. Your estimated wait time is four minutes. And then position in queue now. You are currently seven. In line. 
You see that? And if anybody were to answer the phone call or be in the ready Please state, while we transfer your notice call. how it automatically transfers me to that state. And if I answer the phone call, now you're on a two-way call. Two -way call. Two -way call. Okay. And that's it for estimated wait time and position in queue. Um, we have a little bit more time left. If you guys have any questions, let me know. If you want a copy of this estimated wait time or position in queue to kind of see if you can figure out how to do this in your own environment, send me your email in Zoom chat and I'll be able to send you this script, okay? And if you have any questions, let me know as well. I can always field any questions if you guys unmute and ask your questions. So Michael, you're asking, how is the editor seeing what is going on after you dial the trigger DM? Okay, so here's the thing, right? Um, if you're working with this product, the way to figure stuff out is to be able to dial into the application like I've been doing, right? Now, here's what you probably want to do. Um, if you take a look at my applications here, so you got application management, right? And you got a bunch of applications here. This could be live application, right, that people are dialing into. When you're making these changes to your scripts and stuff, I highly recommend that you create another application and in that other application, like for instance, this is the test zero zero. When you want to test stuff or change stuff about your script, you will basically maybe be making these tests on this test application. And then um, when you are ready, like for instance, I'm gonna, let's do this to true. And um, I'm gonna make these values like 200. I'm gonna make the test position to four, okay? Now, the idea here is when you want to test this, you got to go to your script editor, okay? I'm going to close this out just so you guys can see this. You'll need to debug, and you're going to have to debug the reactive script. Now, here is the thing. The debug for the reactive script, this is the only kind of beneficial way to debug within this system, I think. So when you do the script name here, you're gonna select what script is going to be debugging for. And because this script is applied to this particular application, it just says at any time that script gets run, it's going to actively show you that session within script editor. So when I go in here and I do the wait time in seconds, like 45 seconds, that's actually giving me 45 seconds to call this application for testing purposes. So whenever I call, like in this case, I got to dial 1005. You'll see here that, see how this automatically triggers this uh, debug session. And then you can debug as slowly as you need to, to be able to figure out, hey, here's what's happening inside of my script, right? So again, oh, this always happens with the debug. Like it always messes up the first time but then um, it does catch on the second time. So let me position in queue again, 30 seconds. And let me call that one more time. Okay, so you'll notice when you step over, it give, just gives you time to kind of look at your script and see what's really happening here. So um, as I step through, you'll notice that sometimes you'll hear a play prompt. You are using the wrong greeting prompt. Okay. Please modify the set step in your script validate, save as, upload, and refresh your script, and try again. And then after that, for the menu item, notice it'll play the menu item when you make your selection. Yes, the script editor is aware because this is a session between CCX and kind of like this uh, calling agent, if you will, right? So. Um, what type of problem are you experiencing? Yeah, if I press. For hardware? Press one. Let's say I press Software, four for two. network. Telcom, three. And you'll notice this will change to the network because it knows what I'm doing, right? This is the way to debug and kind of test your script so that you know that your script is working the way that it's supposed to. Um, and I'd say if you haven't been debugging up until now, 
this is the way to kind of figure out what your scripts are doing, right? Um, and the question that you do have, Michael, where how does editor know that it's connected to UCCX? Well, let me log out real quick. And um, if you log back into CCX editor, right, you'll notice that in order to log on to editor, you have to put in a username and password and put it in your CCX server. So as I log into it, it already knows that it's connected to CCX. That's why when you start the debug, it knows what server to touch. And when you're doing the debug, it knows how to respond to you and kind of show you what the debug session looks like. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You have to log in with CCX credentials. And then uh, once you log in there, um, really the debug is how people figure out how contact centers work, to be honest. So use the reactive. Don't just do the debug by starting it. It's always using a reactive debug when you're testing this stuff. OK. Uh, the soft phone that we're using here is an IP blue phone. Um, and uh, I'm not going to say it's the best phone out there, but um, I will tell you why we're using it. We're only using these soft phones because it's the only kind of phones that uh, Sunset was able to kind of find in order for us to get like multiple phones on one kind of virtual machine, right? Because um, we could do one Jabber client, one IP communicator and all that stuff, but that stuff gets clunky real fast. And this is one way where I can kind of spin up, um, you know, four or five phones all at once without, you know, uh, having a hiccup within the system. So that's really why we're using these IP blue phones. They're not the best phones, but as you can see, I can create like seven different instances of phones running at the same time that can kind of register to call manager and yeah. That's the real reason why we're using these IP blue phones. Okay. Um, there is a trial demo. So if you guys go out there and look for IP blue, um, I'm sure there's like a um, IP blue soft phones. You should be able to kind of test this stuff out and register uh, certain types of phones with, with a call manager, but it is limited to just skinny signaling protocol. So if you're trying to do like SIP signaling or anything like that, it, that doesn't work. But for skinny signaling, it does work. Okay. Yeah. So there are some tiny limitations there, Mike. 